Hi, everyone. Welcome to topic three. Uh, our topic is aligned summative and formative assessment. This is actually going to be a mini lecture. Um, it's a quick one because assessments are something that we are all familiar with. You have experienced assessments throughout your entire educational career. You've continued them here at GCU, um, and they're pretty easy to understand. And they're sometimes the most fun part um, to uh, plan for your lessons. So we'll just review them quickly, and I've got a lot of great resources for you. Uh, so we will start with formative assessment. For, there are two types of assessment uh, in this topic. We have formative and summative. So formative is the type of assessment that happens during the learning. It's informal. It's basically your way to kind of check in with your students during your lesson plan. So you're gathering this data, but it's in real time. So um, it's in the middle of your lesson plan. It could be something like, hey, how are you feeling about this? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Are you understanding what we're talking about? So it gets you that information in real time. And then it allows you to kind of make decisions about your lesson plan. So if you say, all right, everybody, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Are you understanding what we're talking about in this lesson? And if you have, you know, half of your class giving you a thumbs down, that's your data. You immediately can make decisions about how you're going to continue your lesson plan. So if you see more than half of your class with those thumbs down, that tells you that they're not ready to move on in the lesson, that you need to kind of take a step back and go over the information again. Give them a little bit of extra practice or model the skill again for them because um, they're not getting it. And that's okay. That's why we use the formative assessment. It tells you as their teacher, how are we progressing? Do we need to take a step back um, or are we good to keep moving forward? Um, and really in formative assessment, it improves student achievement and motivation. It keeps them engaged. If you go through an entire lesson, you've done 45 minutes talking to the students and you don't take a second to check in with them, check for understanding, they're probably not paying attention. They're probably not engaged. So asking them questions, having them share their thoughts, share their ideas, it keeps them engaged and keeps them part of that learning process. Um, and it allows you to give immediate feedback as well. So if you, uh, let's say you're doing a formative assessment, you're going to say, okay, I'm putting this math problem on the board. You have, you know, 90 seconds, solve it on your personal whiteboard or solve it on your paper. You can look at what all of your students are doing during that time. And if you see a student, you're like, oh my gosh, you are completely lost. You in that moment can say, hey, I see you're doing this. That's not necessarily what we want to be doing for this skill or for this problem. How about we try it this way? And you've immediately whatever misconception they have, and you've gotten them back on track for the lesson. Uh, let's see here. So I have some examples for you. So like I talked about before, whiteboards are a great formative assessment. You can get little tiny whiteboards at pretty much any teacher store. You can get them at Target. You can get them um, at Walmart, just little tiny whiteboards. Um, and you can use them just like in this example here, the teacher has obviously given um, uh, a math problem on the board. And so you can do that. You can put a math problem on the board and say, hey, okay, go ahead and solve it. Um, one thing I used to do is say, okay, solve it and then turn it over so no one can see. Um, and then I'll say one, two, three, and you all hold up your whiteboard so I can see. And when they hold up your whiteboards, you take a quick view of all your students and you say, okay, you, 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 you got it, you and you, I'm going to make sure that I come talk to you during independent practice um, and give you some extra support. I'm going to pull you to my horseshoe table and we're just going to do a little bit of practice together. Um, you're not necessarily saying that out loud to your students, but in your own plan, your own thought processes through the lessons, you say, okay, student A, student B, we're going to spend some extra time together. 
Um, you can also use whiteboards for any subject area. It doesn't just have to be math. Um, you could put a multiple choice question up on the board and say, what's the answer, A, B, C, or D, and just have them write it on their whiteboard, cover it up with their hand, and then hold it up. Uh, partner share is another great way to do a formative assessment. You can pose a question um, to the class, like who was the main character in the story or what's the adjective in this sentence? So you pose the question, um, you give them some time to think, then they share with their partner, and then you can call on a couple students to share their answers. Um, while they're sharing with your partner or with their partner, you can also be walking around and listening into what they're saying and responding them to them as well. You know, you're listening to these two partners talk and you can say, you know, I noticed that, you know, student A, I noticed, you know, you shared this answer. Student B, what do you think about that? Do you agree or do you disagree? Um, and you can correct misconceptions that way as well. You probably see your teachers doing this if you have on-ground classes and you are working together. Um, and then you can also do student rating. This is a really good example here. Um, the students can tell you green, yellow, red, are you understanding what we're talking about? You can do the thumbs up, thumbs down. Some teachers even do what's called a fist to five. So a fist is like a zero, I'm not understanding it at all. Five is I'm ready, I could take a test on this right now, I totally can ace it. And then have the students just show you, you know, I'm kind of feeling three about it. I think I could probably try and practice it on my own. Zero, mm -mm, totally lost, I'm not getting it. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to have them hold it up in the air. They can, can show their numbers. I used to have them show it over their heart to kind of keep it a secret. So if a student is showing that fist, like I'm totally lost, I don't get it. Um, they're not like holding it up in the air and like all their peers around them can see that they're not lost. They can just kind of do it over their chest and just kind of tell you like, Mrs. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so, I, I need your help, I'm not getting it. Um, but really you just wanna make sure you're checking in with them. That's the whole purpose of formative assessment is that you're not getting to the end of your lesson and like, oh, uh, the whole class was not with me when I was talking about all of that. Um, I have some really great videos here for you. You can use your the QR codes. You just open up the camera on your phone and hover it over the QR code. Um, all three of these videos are on YouTube and these are the titles. So if you have trouble with the QR code, you can just put these titles in the YouTube search bar. Um, there are videos about teachers talking about the importance of formative assessment, but then you can also see them implementing them in the classroom really great video, so definitely make sure you check them out. Um, and then summative assessment. So summative, I think of it as it's a summary. It's at the end. This is at the very end of learning. Um, it can be at the very end of your lesson or the very end of the unit. But the, the thing to keep in mind is that the summative assessment is kind of your last touch point with the student. It's basically, we've spent this time learning it and modeled it, we practiced it, you practiced it, and now this is your time to show me, you know, have you met our lesson objective or have you uh, mastered the standard that we were working on? The thing to keep in mind with this formal assessment is students do it on their own, it's independent, um, it's the time for you to be able to see, you know, they have it or they don't. Um, but also keep in mind that because it's at the end, you don't necessarily have that time to give them the feedback and reteach them. So basically, the idea is, is you're teaching your lesson, you have your formative assessment, your check-ins during the lesson, um, you're giving students support that way. And then at the very end, on their own, they're doing, usually, you know, it's a test, a quiz, um, a paper, and it's their time to know, okay, this is my time to show you as my teacher if I've got it or if I don't. And then you need to take a look at those assessments, really analyze them and say, okay, this is my group of students, they've got it. Um, and then these are, this is my group of students where they, they didn't get it. And I need to find time now to meet with them, either 
or individually and reteach this to them. So just because it's summative, it's at the end, doesn't mean you never go back to it, but the rest of the group, you're moving on now to your new lessons, your new standards, new unit, and you're finding time somehow during the day um, to pull these students and give them this extra support. That's the point of summative assessment. Who's ready to move on? who needs to meet with me more to make sure that you are learning and that you're meeting um, our lesson objectives. Um, and then, so like I said, the examples, it could be a presentation, a portfolio, um, or a test, but basically the point is, is they are doing it on their own. Summative assessments are not with other students because if a student is working with another student, you don't really have any way to know that what your student turns in is their own work in that it's their own thought and that they actually do understand it. Um, formative assessments, that's the time to have students working together because they're learning from one another. And um, you know, if, if they are taking ideas from another student, that's a good thing. That means they're learning it, they're practicing it. But with your summative assessments, it's All right, like I told you, super, super mini, mini, mini lecture on formative and summative assessments. Please reach out if you have any questions and have a wonderful day.